Hey guys, this is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, and today I'm starting a series about 9th edition Space Wolf tactics. So for all you sons of Russ out there, I'm going to go unit by unit of the most important units in the Space Wolf army, and how best they can be used in 9th edition. We'll also go through a little bit of fluff, a little bit of background of each unit, so that you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> so first up is my favorite by far. He is the young king, Ragnar Blackmane. So, little background about me personally. This is my favorite uh, unit in all of Warhammer 40k. And by that I mean statistics, model, and background. I grew up reading all of his novels. Uh, Space Wolves were the first army I ever had in Warhammer 40k. So, I definitely have nostalgia bomb going off the whole time I'm using them. <laughs> uh... If you haven't read his novels, he's kind of the Warhammer 40k equivalent of Gotrek from AOS or Warhammer Fantasy in that he just, it's his saga of just epic proportions. He's cutting down between giant monsters, greater demons, you know, whole armies of enemies. He's a total badass, just like Gotrek. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit of fluff from directly out of the codex. Um, I definitely recommend reading his novel series as well. Uh, William King writ, uh, wrote his first like three books, I think, and then it got picked up by a different author. Um, they're amazing and they're cheap. So I definitely recommend downloading those on your phone or picking them up at Half Price Books or wherever you can find them. They're amazing and it really gives you some good lore and background to this epic, epic character in Warhammer 40k. So, Ragnar Blackmane, the young king. Ragnar Blackmane is exceptional in every sense of the word. The youngest ever battle brother to have been promoted to the status of wolf lord, Ragnar exudes confidence, skill, and athletic ability from every fiber of his whipcord fast body. It is said that he is always the first to make planet fall during an invasion and the last to leave the battlefield, and to witness one of his berserk rages is to watch the fury of the hurricane come to life. Many believe that he will succeed Logan Grimnar as Great Wolf, but the wolf priests know that he will have to master his anger first. For though Ragnar's temper and capacity for hatred gives him great power, it makes him impetuous and may yet prove his downfall. Born to the Thunderfist tribe in the far reaches of Fenris, Ragnar has always been touched by glory. As a child, he ran with young warriors twice his age, and even as a youth, his famous battle frenzy saw him reap a frightening tally on the rival tribe's menfolk. His audacity and spirit made Ragnar perfect for the Adeptus Astartes, and after his discovery by the wolf priests, the youngster was chosen for ascension. It was during the punishing trials that every aspirant must undertake that Ragnar's resourcefulness and skill came to the fore. As he roamed alone in the wilderness, Ragnar was hunted in turn by one of the much-feared black-maned wolves, as dark and terrible as any night demon. Though it was many times his size, Ragnar killed the wolf with his bare hands. Burning with exhaustion, Ragnar subsequently hauled its carcass through the snowdrifts to the fang. This great deen, deed was seen by the wolf priest as a good omen. From that day, Ragnar took the black mane as his totem and namesake, Forever, forever cementing his place in the legends of the Sky Warriors. Such is his animal charisma, he is often accompanied to war by two hulking Fenrisian wolves, Svangir and Ulfgir, that lope in his wake, just as the legendary wolves Freki and Giri once followed Limonrus himself. The next chapter of Ragnar's saga tells of his elevation from the ranks of the Wolf Claws to the Wolf Guard. His near unheard of promotion was accomplished after Ragnar slew the orc warlord Borzag Khan in close combat and went on to dispatch the warlord's retinue one after another. Ragnar did not rest upon his laurels. He quickly proved himself a gifted leader of men as well as a talented warrior. When his wolf lord Beric Thunderfist was felled by a champion of the dark gods, it was Ragnar who led the bloody hunt for his master's killer. Ragnar was later appointed Wolf Lord in Beric's stead, a remarkable accomplishment for one so young. Ragnar has proved that his greatest skill lies in the execution of orbital deployments and planet strike actions. Logan Grimnar regularly chooses Ragnar's great company, the Black Mains, to spearhead planetary invasions and, with an unrivaled success rate under his belt, Ragnar's deeds have spread across the galaxy. 
Ragnar was pivotal in gathering the newly returned Wolfen back to Fenris and played a major role in halting the Dark Angel's assault upon the Space Wolf's homeworld and the wider Fenris system. Considering his relatively young age, Ragnar Blackmane may yet go on to become the greatest wolf lord in history. That is just a small portion of what this great warrior has done for the chapter. I, like I said, I definitely recommend reading the novels. They are incredible. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and look at his statistics and his special rules now that he has ascended to Primaris. All right, so first thing is Ragnar Blackmane is an HQ choice. He's infantry. He's 125 points in 9th edition for now. I expect this to go up because his stats are incredible. And we'll just start it right off. So Ragnar Blackmane, movement 6 inches, weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 2, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 6, attacks 7, which is awesome, leadership 9, and save 3+. plus. So, first ability, Battle Lust. When a friendly Space Wolves unit within 6 inches of this model, and not within 3 inches of an enemy unit, consolidates, it can move up to 6 inches instead of 3. This is a huge rule that will, might be overlooked. Um, basically, you hit a unit really hard and wipe them. Instead of piling three towards your opponent, you can pile six. So you can go tag more units or tag more vehicles so that they can only shoot at you instead of other units. It's just really good, and it's not just for him. It's a friendly Space Wolves unit within six inches of this model. So if you can get him in a, you know, a unit or two of... Maybe the new Assault Intercessors or Reavers or whatever you're using to hit hard. You're going to be able to pile in six inches just to keep bogging down the enemy, tying up units. It's very good and it's going to spread kind of a fear of that happening through your opponent. So they may even spread out their units even more to keep this from happening. And that's great for you in which case because basically they'll have to be further away from all their aura um characters you know the reroll captain bubble and all that reroll lieutenant bubble which is great for you because then they'll have to spread out and not as many units will get those buffs or if they castle up so they can all have their buffs they'll all be right there for you to just tag all their units um, you have to be kind of careful because they'll be able to hit you but um, if you time this just right this could be a game winning ability uh, next ability he has is belt of rust um Provides the wear wearer with a four plus invulnerable save, so pretty normal. All captains have it. Uh, Berserker Rage is the next one. This is his very unique, very awesome ability. When this character is affected by the Shock Assault ability, add three to the attack's characteristic of this model instead of one. So if you've already done the math in your head, or you've already heard about this around the internet, he has ten attacks in the first round of combat. If he heroically intervened or charged or was charged he gets 10 attacks next rule is the Jarl of Fenris you can reroll hit rolls of one for friendly space wolf units within six of this model so normal captain bubble you know don't sleep on that ability it's great um, it definitely helps would have been nice if he had the you know chapter master full rerolls but you know we won't complain he's not he's not quite chapter master yet uh, next is war howl you can reroll failed charge rolls for friendly Space Wolf units other than vehicles if they're within six inches of this model when the roll is made. So reroll charge bubble, pretty awesome. Uh, basically, he's he gives out a bubble of what whole other chapters get as their chapter buff. He basically turns your wolves into Black Templars. Um, it's awesome. He's just he's ready to rock. That's before he was Primaris. That really helped when he would get out of his drop pod. Now that he is Primaris, you can't take a drop pod, but you could uh, outflank him with a stratagem off the side of the board and get reroll charges, or do as I do and put him behind a wall of dreadnoughts and run him up the board. Um, you could also put him in a uh, Impulsor, maybe with some of the new uh, Shield veterans as his bodyguards. Get out and have rerollable charges for all of them. It's pretty great. So, now that we know he has 10 attacks, let's talk about things you can do with him main one that i enjoy and i'm sure you've probably heard of on the internet is touch of the wild it is a stratagem that is one cp use this stratagem in the fight phase select one space wolf's character model in your army 
until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made by that model, an unmodified hit roll of four plus scores one additional hit. So, <laughs> what that means is he's hitting on twos, rerolling ones with 10 attacks, and every four plus is an additional hit. So, mathematically at least, you should have five four ups out of 10. Uh, so that means with your 10 attacks, you're hitting 15 times. So now as we go down and look at his weapon loadout, you'll see why this is so dangerous. So, pretty bog standard. He has a bolt pistol, frag grenades, and crack grenade. Pretty normal. But his special chainsword is called Frost Fang. It is strength plus two, so that means he'll have strength six. AP minus four, which is hilarious. It'll be AP minus five from turn three on because of the Assault Doctrine. And damage flat two. So, if you go back to that stratagem we just used, let's say he crashed headlong into a unit of 10 intercessors that are trying to hold an objective. He now hit 15 times with 10 attacks because of the stratagem. He then wounds on threes, and because he's minus four and two damage, he just basically kills Primaris on threes. Um, if you have him with a little lieutenant buddy nearby to reroll ones, it's not unheard of for him to just explode the entire unit of 10 Primaris, um, all for 125 points. So if you time him just right and protect him, he's a cruise missile. He's coming for the other enemy, uh, other sidelines, and he's coming to just destroy entire units in one swing. Um, the trouble is he's very, very squishy. He's only T4, 3-up save, 4-up interval with 6 wounds. Six wounds helps, because it's Primaris now, but any Warhammer player will tell you that is not hard to get through. Nowadays, with Eliminator, Primaris snipers out there, you've got sniper units in a lot of different armies. Um, you really got to protect him, even just with line of sight blocking terrain or whatever you can think of. Um, I personally run him behind Wolf and Dreadnoughts with the four up interval shields and axes. Uh, one, it looks amazing, and now that the board is smaller, it's not too hard to get there. Um, but another strategy, I think, would be to put him in an impulser. Um, like I said, with even just a bare unit of five intercessors, so that when he gets out, he has them in front of him still, just to protect him, because he has the character keyword, um, would be pretty handy, because I'd get him off the board really quick. Um yeah, I have a uh, notes app in my phone, and I'm just keeping track of my own personal saga of Ragnar Blackmane. And so far in ninth edition, um, he's won against Custodes, and he took down the Vexilla Standard Bearer. So that was pretty cool. So I have that on my list of important models that he's killed in his ninth edition games. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely chime down in the comments if you've used him or if you're hoping to use him. Um, those first three pictures on this video are of my personal paint job of Ragnar Blackmane. I give him half red armor, half gray armor. I don't know, I just think it looks awesome. That's what my, my own personal chapter, The Cult of the Red Wolf, uh, that's their color scheme, half red, half gray. Um, but yeah, I tend to run him up a flank with some dreadnoughts, so it's really hard to chew through those to where you're able to target him. Um, and when he gets there, it's tricky because a lot of times he'll just kill the first unit he hits and then he's kind of out in the open to get targeted. So you really have to time it right to where you're hitting the enemy lines along several flanks or along the whole front uh, so that he may not, after consolidating, be the closest. Since he gives the 6-inch consolidate, it says uh, can move up to 6 inches. So yeah, just move him up 5 and move the rest of your guys up 6 so that now the enemy units that are still out there cannot just freely target him because he will go down quickly even just to like bolt rifle fire or even just guardsman fire if there's enough of them um it is only strength six even with 10 attacks so if you want to like throw him into a tank maybe a little harder i mean i'm not sure if you did the math he'll need fives to wound most of the tougher tanks even with like 15 attacks it's it's a little bit of trouble it's a little, little tricky crazy thing about Ragnar is his stratagem support is incredible. Uh, you can spend another three to attack again 
if something is somehow still alive after all that. Um, if the, let's say he's going against something really tough, like Mortarion. He fights, he does his damage, Mortarion hits back and kills him. You can then spend 2 CP to fight when you die. Uh, and get all those attacks again with the same buff up. So even though he still probably won't kill Mortarion, he's going to take at least half his wounds and all for only 125 points. So point for point, I think is the most dangerous thing in all of Warhammer in terms of point for point. Um, there's just nothing out there that touches that. I mean, 10 attacks, you should always save a CP for that stratagem so that he ends up with like 15 hits. Uh, I mean, Korn wishes they had a guy like this. This is how Karn should work in a World Eater's army. I mean, 15 hits with one <laughs> primary size model is amazing. And honestly, the fear of him will spread and opponents will fan out and try their best not to ever have to fight him. Um, so that's kind of on you as a Space Wolf player is figure out ways and tricks to get him into combat. You can try the new uh, outflanking stratagem. Um, that's one way to get him up the board a lot quicker and just hope he succeeds with that charge. I mean, it will be rerolling, so it's also nice to have him outflank with other units so he can give that buff. Um, if you know your opponent is combat-oriented or the mission has a lot of objectives in the middle of the battlefield, which a lot of them do now, you know your opponent's probably going to come to you a little bit too, so you won't have to wait quite as long to get him into combat, even if you are foot-slogging up the field. Um, unfortunately, unlike Blood Angels, there aren't a lot of stratagems that make you faster for Space Wolves. You, there's stratagems that make you hit harder, and there's defensive stratagems, but not much that makes you faster. So it's kind of on you to figure out ways to get him up there. Now that he's Primaris, he has a lot less options. We're talking Repulsor, Impulsor, On Foot, or Outflank are basically your only options at this point. Um, I mean, putting him in a Repulsor is amazing. It's a lot of points, a lot of guns, but you know he's safe in there for at least a turn or two unless your opponent has some seriously heavy firepower. Um, and in a repulsor, you could have him in there with like three aggressors, which would be so scary. Your opponent's going to run for the hills from that thing. Um, yeah, guys, let me know how, your thoughts on Ragnar Blackmane as a character. Um, he's by far my favorite unit in all of Warhammer, and I've had every army. Um, I just uh, adore his rules, his model, and his uh background it's like a perfect storm so with that being said that is the first of our unit by unit breakdown of the space wolves codex starting with the young king himself ragnar blackmane i'll be back soon with how to use bjorn the fell handed in your games of ninth edition this is nick from beer and bat reps thanks for joining me guys till next time